Next up, we're going to build the pricing page. So we're going to add a new page, call it pricing. We'll then go over to our home page and we'll copy over the navigation. We'll paste that into our pricing page. We'll also copy our hero because our hero section will be similar on the pricing page. We need to make sure our pricing page is 1400 in width. And then we're going to paste in our hero section. Make sure the hero section is actually in the desktop. And now we can start editing our hero section. Change the width of our hero text to bring the every need onto a different line. Remove the input and remove the browser image. We can add a new section. We're going to add a grid. Going to change the width of the grid to 1200. Change the name of the grid to pricing. Remove the background. Remove three rows from our grid and then change the grid to only have one row. And now we can start editing the content for our pricing columns. So we're going to have three different pricing columns, three different pricing cards, and I'm going to be renaming the column pricing card and then putting in the text for the pricing card. So we can see we have basic, the price per month, and the description of the pricing. We're going to copy over our button that we used in the call to action. Copy that button over to our pricing card. Paste it in there like so. And that is the skeleton of our pricing card. Of course, we need to change the text of our button as well, but yeah, that is the skeleton of our pricing card. Now that we have the information in there, we can start styling it. I want the price and the per month to be on the same line. So we're going to select those two layers and add a stack. Make sure that they're aligned to the left on both. Change the direction to horizontal. And then change the width of the price to fit and then change the width of the per month to fit as well so that they're closer together change the container of the price and the per month to fit content too and then we can change the alignment to be at the bottom let's change the text size for our description change the line height as well Change the color to a more light gray. Change the name to card. And now let's add a white background to our card. Make it 100%. Add some padding. We'll add 30 pixels of padding. We'll change the gap of our grid to 40. Add a radius to our card. Add a subtle shadow. Change the shadow opacity to 5%. We'll add a border too. Change the opacity of the border to 10%.
let's change the line height of our pricing so that the line height of it is more in line with the per month text. I'm also going to remove the styling of the per month text and add a lighter gray to it, make it a regular weight too. Decrease the size of our description. Decrease the size of our per month text too. Make the gap between the elements larger. We'll make it 15. Then let's change the width of our button. We'll make it 100% in width so it fills the card. Change the color of our button as well. We'll remove the fill. We'll add a border instead to this one because we want people to go for the card in the middle. That's the pricing that we're trying to highlight. So for the basic plan, we're just going to have a basic button. And then what we want to do is we actually want to have a checklist of features underneath our pricing card. So I'm just going to copy the description from the card and then rearrange it so that it's under the card. And then we're going to drag and drop a tick icon. Bring that tick icon inside the pricing card column and then add a stack to the tick icon and the feature, the text. Change the direction to horizontal and then we'll change the width and the height to fit as well. And we'll call this feature. And then we can just change the text in there as well. Then we can copy and paste our feature multiple times. So we have a sort of checklist of features for that pricing. We'll make them a stack, call it feature list, and then of course change the width and the height to fit as well. We'll change the gap of these features to 15. Change the text of the features. And there we are. We have a pricing column ready to go. Then we can copy and paste our pricing column so we have three of them. We can go to our second column now, and this is the one we want to highlight. So we'll change the price, of course, and we're going to add a border to this one to highlight it more than the other pricing options. So we'll add a blue-ish sort of border, make it 100% and make it a width of two. And we can see that's already highlighting that card a lot more compared to the other pricing cards. We'll change the color of the standard text as well. We'll add a gradient to it. And we'll actually adjust the border a little bit. We'll make it a bit more of a light blue. There we are. And then we'll add some color to our button because this is the button we want people to focus on. There we are, that's our standard pricing card done. And then we can quickly do our premium card. And there we are, we have our pricing columns ready to go. We'll then adjust the padding of our pricing section. And now we can add a new section by adding a frame. And we're going to have this as the enterprise section. So a lot of pricing plans for websites, they'll have like an enterprise section where you can get a custom pricing. And this is what that section is. We're going to add our enterprise text, change the font size. Add a description for it choose from one of our textiles that we have. Change the textile to body small actually. And then copy and paste a button in. We can see this button is way too wide, but by selecting the button, we can just change the width to fit the content and it will adjust to a regular size. Change the text of the button to contact. Contact us, make a stack of all of the elements within the enterprise section. Rename the enterprise section, of course. We'll also name the content in the enterprise section a card because it will look like a card. We'll change the width of it to 100%. Add a max width of 800 pixels and then height will fit content. 
we'll change the width and the height of the enterprise section to fit as well. And now we can start styling our card for the enterprise section. So we're just going to add a quick gradient. It's a four color gradient here, very subtle. Add a radius, add a border again of 5% this time. And then add some padding to our card. We'll do 40 above or 40 top, 40 bottom or 50 bottom actually. And then 20 right, 20 left. We'll change the gap between our elements to 20. And I actually don't like how there seems to just be too much of a gap between the title, the enterprise title and the description. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those two elements and I'm going to make those a stack and then have a gap for that instead. We'll call it card text. And then we'll change the width and the height of that to fit content and we'll make the gap. Eight, yeah, there we go. And then the gap between the text and the buttons will be 30. And yeah, that just looks better, I think, aesthetically. And now we need to enter our footer. So what we can do here is we can go to assets and we can actually select our component footer and just insert it. And then of course, make sure that it's within our desktop. There we are, we have our footer in our website as well. We'll change the padding for our enterprise section just to give it a bit of space above and below. And yeah, that is it. That is the desktop for our pricing page ready to go. Now let's start making it responsive. We'll add a tablet breakpoint. We'll also add our phone breakpoint. Now we can see we definitely need some work. We definitely need to adjust this. So let's adjust the hero section first. Make sure the width of it is 100%. We'll change the padding of our hero section on the tablet and then we'll change it on the phone as well. We'll choose our pricing section, change the padding for that too. We'll make it so that we can add padding to the top, right, bottom and left. And as we can see, we're actually doing this to the desktop version. And then from the desktop version, it will trickle down to the tablet and mobile version. We can see our feature list for the pricing cards isn't responsive so we're going to adjust this we're going to make the width of it to fill 1fr and then we're going to copy and paste that into the other pricing columns as well there we go that's much better now it is responsive we'll adjust our enterprise section as well to have padding left and right and then we'll make sure the card within our enterprise section also has a width of 1fr We'll adjust the width of our description in the card text to one FR, and then we'll center it as well. And then that's responsive on the tablet and phone. So I'm going to quickly adjust the footer as well, just change the variant so that it is responsive. And then we can tackle our pricing columns themselves. So the pricing columns on the tablet version what we'll do is we'll reduce the gap. And I think that works just about fits. We'll also adjust the padding for the cards themselves to 20. And then we'll adjust the pricing columns for the mobile version as well. We'll choose the grid and we'll make it a stack and then we'll change the direction to a vertical. It's already nearly there. We just need to adjust some padding for it. So we'll increase the gap to 40. And then we'll choose the pricing cards and we'll change the width of them to one FR so they fill. There we go. It looks much, much better on the phone version as well. We'll also adjust the padding for the enterprise section will reduce the padding above and that is our pricing page ready to go all finished responsive looks fantastic and i think what's vital here is because we did a lot of the legwork for the home page where we did the titles the fonts the colors all these different things it makes it so much easier to do all of the other pages of the website when you know you have the style nailed down